Hello and welcome to the next video in the Ardu Heli setup using Ardu Copter on a Pixhawk 6C Mini here at the back in the place that would normally have some kind of gyro to build a robotic helicopter. Now I've already done a couple of videos already setting up things like the head and also setting up the tail as well. This time it's all around setting up the ESC and the motor and it's not as difficult as it first appears. You know, the documentation has been updated all the time and it's getting better and better but I know that myself reading through the documentation it really wasn't clear. Now I need to say a massive thank you to this gentleman here. This gentleman is one of the Ardu developers called Matt. Matt is a helicopter flyer and has been spectacular in helping me navigate my way through this. So a big thank you to Matt for his time. It's his expertise that's in here. Any errors that are in these videos are absolutely down to me, not to Matt. However, hopefully by having each of these videos around a specific topic, so one about setting up the head, one setting the tail, this one about the ESC and motor setup, and then maybe we'll go through how to maiden and then how to tune, will hopefully give you enough of a knowledge of how to go about this. Now, a couple of warnings before we get into this. A helicopter is probably, in my opinion, the single most dangerous radio control flying vehicle that you can get your hands on. They are thrilling and exciting in a way that multi-rotors aren't. I know quite a lot of multi-rotor pilots that have come on to helicopters, and if you can fly a quad, a multi-rotor, you can fly one of these uh, with a couple of very slight differences. This is variable pitch. Quads don't tend to be. So when you drop the throttle, gravity kind of does the work. However, with this, it can fly upside down. It can actually push itself down. So there's a couple of tweaks, but generally, if you can fly a quadcopter, you can fly one of these. When these things spin up, they, the noise they make, the power that comes off them, it's thrilling, uh, but you need to treat them with respect. When you've gone through this process, you're not going to end up with a 3D sports heli that you can tick tock and fly around and do that stuff you see in videos. This is going to be a flying robot. The pitch, if you already watched the head setup, is set from kind of plus 11 to minus 2. So it's about just kind of flying around. And more and more UAV systems that are professional are starting to come back to helicopters because they are spectacularly efficient because they have one set of rotors doing all the lifting rather than four of them and all the losses that they provide. However, I wouldn't attempt to do this unless you have already played with Ardu Pilot on something else and had success. That you know how to flash a flight controller, you know how to set up a radio, you know to go, how to go through the calibration steps, configuration, and also had successful flights. This wouldn't be your first experience with Ardu Pilot, in my humble opinion. I would have a go with a plane or a quad and get, get chops with that kind of stuff. It's far easier and then come on to this, and then you'll be ready to go through this because it actually isn't that complicated. Also useful if you have a little bit of experience with manual helicopters in terms of things like pitch head setup, uh, linkage setup, and things like that. This all relies on the helicopter being set up well mechanically out of the box. Uh, there's loads of videos and instructional things about how to do all that stuff. But with all those warnings out of the way, let's get through this because this actually isn't as tricky as it looks. So the first thing that I would recommend if you're going to have a crack at this is get yourself a helicopter that has an ESC with an inbuilt governor. And what governors do will actually set and manage the head speed at the specific speed that you want based on a signal input. So rather than the PWM signal or whatever it is going to the ESC, setting kind of the power that ESC is running at, it's a little bit smarter here. With a governor, you can kind of figure out what the speed needs to be, send that signal to the governor in the ESC, and the ESC just takes care of everything. It's an awful lot easier, and it makes the setup super simple. Now, in this OMP Hobby M4 ESC that I have inside this model, it does have a governor, uh, but it also has telemetry that can come back too. At the moment, some of the RPM libraries within the Ardu Heli stuff are a little bit flaky, so I wouldn't recommend that. Maybe that's something that we come back to and talk about in a future video. At the moment, I have not connected up the telemetry. I don't need it because I can be pretty confident that when I ask for a specific head speed from the governor, the governor in the ESC is just going to take care of it and get that speed and then maintain that speed through the flight. 
The other thing as well is that this is a direct drive head setup. So there's one big motor here at the bottom. There's no main gear with a pinion gear and all that kind of shenanigans. To calculate head speed, if you are getting telemetry back, it gets a bit more complicated. If it's a one-to-one -one ratio, i.e. the motor shaft is actually the main shaft of the blades, then you know what? It also gets a lot easier too. Again, that's why this M4 is quite a nice one to do it on. And then finally, on the radio, if you are coming to this from a more traditional helicopter setup, you will be used to setting up curves. I've done loads of videos on this on the channel. There are lots of bind and fly helicopters still need them. In Ardu Pilot, you never ever set up any curves on the radio. All that stuff is done in Ardu Copter and in the settings and all the stuff that I'm showing you in this series. If you're setting a curve up on your radio, stop, go back and just check everything because you are potentially going to get into a lot of trouble. You don't do any of that stuff either with pitch or with things like throttle curves either, particularly if you're using an ESC with a governor. So let's just very quickly talk about the radio while we're on the subject of the radio. So to reiterate, you never, ever, ever set up throttle or pitch curves on here with something like an Ardu Heli. Just ignore that stuff and follow all the settings that we've already talked about in the series. There are May, four main controls, um, as I've shown already. See the head setup video that kind of goes through everything. There are two additional controls that you definitely gonna need. You need to have an arming switch, and I would recommend you set it up that way. And you also need to set up another switch on the radio, a motor interlock switch. Why two? Well, in Ardu Copter, it's a two-stage arming process. And I think that's a very, very good idea because once a helicopter starts spooling up, things can get exciting very quickly if you're not ready for it. So when you fly, and I'll go through this process in a moment, you arm the copter first, then Ardu Pilot is ready to rock and roll, all the systems are on and ready to fly. And then, and only when you're ready to fly, you flick the motor interlock, and then the signal is sent to the ESC, and the ESC will start spooling up. When you land, it's the other way around, motor interlock comes off first, then you disarm when you're safe. So it's a two-stage arming process, so remember to set up those two different things. You're going to need both of them in order to fly. Now, there are a number of settings that you are going to need to set, um, all starting with H underscore RSC that dictates how the throttle and the ESC and the ultimately the blades and rotors are going to turn. And they are on this slide. Don't worry, it looks a bit complicated, but I promise you it isn't. This green line here is just the head speed, time along the bottom, and the head speed here on the vertical axis. And as you can see, you're going to start, the head speed is going to rise and get up to the head speed that you need. Then you're going to fly in around and do what you need to do. And then when you come down, you're going to turn off the motor interlock and that's going to slow the blades down and eventually they're going to stop. So that's what this green line here is, is showing. However, there's a couple of different settings in here. The first one we're going to talk about here is on the very left hand side, HRSC ramp time. This is not needed if you're set to a governor. This is normally used to kind of soft start the, the rotors. You don't need that with a modern helicopter, particularly if you have an ESC that have soft start on it already. So typically you could set this to four or five seconds and it would gently ramp up the throttle value over that four or five seconds. Because we've got a governor and a modern ESC, we will essentially turn this off. You can't set it to zero at the moment. One is the lowest number, so we'll just set that to one. Next one then is the run-up time, and this is how many seconds the head needs to be just left alone to spin up to its full speed. And that is going to be set by things like your soft start on your ESC. With smaller models, it might take five, six seconds. On bigger models, it can take up to 15, 20 seconds. You just need to measure that and set that HSC run-up time so that it will give the head time to get to speed, then you are ready to fly. Because once that time has passed, our pilot is going to consider that the helicopter is ready to go. The signal that's sent to the ESC is set by this one here, HRSC set point. And this is the signal, the PWM value that's going to be sent to the ESC that's going to tell the governor what kind of head speed we want. 
look at that in a moment for this particular speed controller that we have here. In the middle, channel value for this one is around 2000 RPM. Uh, the RPM is very dependent on the model that you've got. The manual will give you an idea of what the head speed needs to be. Something like 1800 to 2200 is typical for this size of helicopter. 2000 from what I'm hearing. And also a massive thank you to another pilot called Alistair who got in touch with me about this stuff and shared his settings. He's running at a 2000 RPM head speed and it's a nice flying heli for him. Once you've been flying heli for a while, you'll know what sounds right. Then on the other side, after we have turned the motor interlock off, we have a setting which is HRSC critical. That sets the head speed below which it's no longer safe to fly. It's a little bit of a backwards way of doing it. To be fair, I would just leave that as the default stuff because that those four settings together kind of tell RD Pilot how long to wait after you've started the rotor turning for it to be up to speed and then how long it'll take for the rotor to slow down and be below the point that it's safe to fly. So going into RD Pilot, how have I set mine up? Well, I've plugged in my ESC into output five and I'm in RD Pilot, I've set servo five function to be 31 and that sets the output for output five to be the heli RSC output. Next thing I've set up then is H underscore RSC underscore mode is two. That means that it's going to be talking to a speed controller that has a governor inside. That makes it an awful lot easier. I've also then set the RSC set point at 50 or middle channel position. That's going to give me a head speed of around 2000 RPM, which is what I want to have a crack at here. Again, that assumes the ESC is all calibrated. Make sure you're clear about what the endpoints are for the ESC that you're playing with and match those as the min and max on the channel five that you've got set. Because it's a governor, we don't need ramp time. So I'm just going to set that to one, the lowest value currently possible because I don't need it. And I'm going to set my run up time to about eight. So eight seconds uh, later, then the RD pilot system is going to assume that the head speed is now at full speed running at 2000 RPM and we're ready to rock and roll. The only other thing I've done is I have set up that extra channel on the radio and set that extra channel input to be option 32 and that is motor interlock and again we need both arming and motor interlock to get this all to happen now how do i know that this it needs to be 50 percent for 2000 rpm this is the little diagram from the manual from the esc and it shows the different speeds related to throttle value and we can see here that at 50 percent throttle the speed is 2000 rpm so i know that 50 percent throttle is going to be there or thereabouts so with that said, let's talk a little bit about the arming process, how you're going to fly and how we're going to land, because we now have lots of different things happening and we have arming and interlocks. What is the process? It's not too tricky. So in the startup arming process, obviously, we're going to turn on the radio. Then we're going to power the helicopter, wait for everything to go through the standard initialization beeps. Once that's all done, then I'm going to press the safety switch on the GPS. I personally would recommend keeping the safety switch on the GPS as something you have to press so that there is actually three separate things that you have to do in order to get the rotors to turn for additional safety. Once you've pressed the safety switch, as we've seen in the head setup and the tail setup, that will get the servos all activated. Then I'm going to flick the arming switch on the radio then the Arducopter system is going to be ready to fly, but the, crucially, the rotors will not start turning until I flick the interlock switch, and then the countdown is going to start, the rotors are going to be speeding up, and we're going to wait for that kind of ramp time to happen, and after that ramp time, the system is going to be ready to take off and fly. Landing is pretty much the opposite way round. First of all, we're going to land the helicopter, I would recommend that you maintain a low pitch. That means that the helicopter is actually pressing itself into the ground, can help with stability and just making sure that if it does try and go over, it's going to kind of save itself a little bit. Once it's in low pitch, then I would switch off the motor interlock. That's going to turn the signal off to the ESC. The ESC is going to stop powering the rotors and they're going to start to slow down. Then once that happens, I would then disarm 
using the arming switch on the radio and then wait for the rotors to stop and it's safe. At that point, it's unplugged the helicopter and unplugged the radio. Couple of pro tips as we get to the end of this stuff. As you can see, it's actually not that tricky. There's only a handful of things that you need to set because the ESC and the governor in the ESC is kind of doing a lot of the donkey work for you. All you're doing is really telling R2 pilot to let the ESC know the speed that you want to fly at and also how long it's going to take for the head to spool up and how long it's going to take for the head to calm down, kind of. Be aware, the tune that we will get to at some point in this series is head speed dependent. If I then change that head speed from 2000 to 2100, I'm going to have to rerun the tune. Be super careful of that. Uh, things like the settings of the run-up time are actually relatively easy to figure out. If you just kind of fire it up and wait for the head speed to finally reach its speed, if you just time how long that takes, I personally would add an extra second on for safety. That is going to be what you're going to set run-up time to. Smaller helis are typically going to run up faster. Uh, bigger helis will tend to run up a bit slower. Sometimes it's also a setting on the ESC. Again, getting ESC telemetry can be useful. Uh, there is potentially a way that we can do this, and it might be a video that I do as a supplemental th thing afterwards, where you can use a little CAN bus node to get the telemetry back in a more reliable way. Again, at the moment, the RPM libraries and the telemetry in the copter stuff is not great, so I'm not using it right now. And the other top tip is when you're landing, lots of pilots forget to do this, but when you're landing, keep the pitch low. I tend to, as soon as I'm on the on the ground, I tend to just lower my uh, pitch control to the minimum value. Uh, you kind of need that in for Ardu Copter to detect that it's kind of landed because it needs to be below a certain level and no longer moving for it to go, oh, I must be on the ground. So I would make sure that you get into that habit as well. So there you have it. That's how you do it. That's how you set it up. It's really not as complicated as it first appears. I, If you have a smart choice and you pick an ESC that has, has a gunner inside, that's how you do it. So join me in the next videos where hopefully we'll get to the point now where we can actually uh, plug all this final bits and pieces together, take it to the field, do a first maiden flight. We can go through that and then do a supplementary follow-up video on how you can go through the tuning process. Again, don't forget, tuning is head speed dependent uh, to make this thing into a fully flying Ardu pilot vehicle. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Payland 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.